My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. As we read the Gospels and we get to know you, our Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes, Lord, we're surprised by your promises. Our Lord makes promises that are incredible, that are at times difficult to believe. And so we, as we read one of these promises in our prayer today, we can ask him for faith, faith and insight to see what we can get out of this promise, faith to believe in it. Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful thing to hear from our Lord's lips. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. And the church's prayer, especially in the church's liturgy, is always through Jesus Christ. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So many of the church's prayers end precisely in that way, invoking your name, Lord, invoking the name of our Savior, the name of our Lord, the name of the Son of God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. This is how the church prays. And here, Lord, you make this incredible promise that if we ask in your name, if we truly ask in your name, we will receive. God will answer our prayers that we, that we make to him in your name. In a way, this is a little bit like what we experience in advertising at times. If we're listening to a radio show or a podcast and they refer to an offer from one of their sponsors, they'll tell us to go to a website or to call the company and they'll say, mention that we sent you and you'll get this discount, right? Or put in the special code, right? Tell them that Andy sent you, <laughs> if Andy is the host of the show. Or put in, you know, WFAN in the, in the, um, in the website and you'll get 25% off. But this is what our Lord is doing. He's saying, when, when, when you go to God, tell him that I sent you. Tell him that you're with me, right? Use my name, mention my name, and your prayers will be, will be more powerful. And of course, this is not uh, magic. This is not some sort of secret trick to get what we want. I, our Lord says, until now, you have not asked anything in my name. And so asking in his name means something special. What does it mean, Lord, to ask in your name? To ask in his name is to ask in his person, to ask in his place. Right? The name, especially the name of God, represents the person. The names of God represent God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't take God's name in vain, because the name goes through the sound, through the meaning, and touches the person. And so we're respectful of the name of God. And so to ask in Jesus' name is to ask in his person, in his stead, in his place. Which means it's to ask as he would ask, as Son of God. 
And as Son of God, Lord, what are you asking for? What do you want? Well, Jesus wants above all that the Father's will be done. And Jesus wants above all that the Father be glorified. Jesus wants what God the Father wants. And this is the prayer that he most powerfully prays in the agony of the garden. If it's possible, let this cup pass from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. This is how the Son of God prays. This is how the Son of God asks. This is what I want, he says to God. This is what I would prefer. But not as I will, but as thou wilt. Why? Because my food, Jesus says, is to do the will of him who sent me. My food is to do the will of him who sent me. And in another passage, Jesus says, I always do what is pleasing to him. And so to ask, Lord, in your name, perhaps we need to have more trust in God. We need to have a greater desire that God's will be done. We need to have a greater identification, Lord, with your own with your own sacred heart. To ask in Jesus' name is to ask simply and sincerely for what we want, but to have it combined and backed up with a tremendous trust that God knows best, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And so how do we get everything that we want? How do we get everything that we ask for? Well, this will happen when we identify ourselves fully with Christ, when we give over our will to his will. Then we'll get whatever we want, because like Christ, we'll, we will will only what God wants. We won't, we won't want anything that's outside of God's plan for us. We won't want anything that is bad for us in God's eyes. And so we'll get everything that we want because our hearts and our wills will be aligned with God, just as Christ's heart and will is aligned with his Father. And so let's think about this. What should we ask God for? What does God want for us? What does he want to give us? And so many times we pray for material blessings, perhaps especially in this time of pandemic, it's important and and we should, and God wants us to pray for health, to pray for security, to pray for the economy, to pray for all the people who are suffering physically. But sometimes I think our, our desires and our intentions stay too much at the earthly level. What are the prayers that God can't resist answering? Not just answering in some way, but answering in the way that we ask for them. What does God have to give us? Well, I think he has to give us what he demands from us. Right? He has to give us the help we need to be and to act in the way that he wants us to be and to act. And so if we ask for trust in him, he's going to give it to us. If we ask for charity, he's going to give it to us. If we ask for humility, he's going to give it to us. Now, this, the, even these petitions might take time. Why? Because to grow in, in trust and in charity and in humility, I might have to change habits. God might have to humble me in some way or help me go through some process of transformation to be more like him. And that might be a painful process and it might be a long process. But these are prayers that, that God has to answer if we ask for them with the right intention, if we ask, ask for them with humility. Lord, give me charity. Lord, give me hope. Lord, give me trust. Why? Because Christ has promised and God has promised that we're called to holiness. And so he has to give us things that we, um, that we need to be saints. He has to give us things that we need to be like him. And this is to ask in Jesus' name. To ask for, not just for what we want, but above all, for what God wants, for what God wants for us. We pray this every day in the Our Father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And Lord, this is the prayer that you taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We go to Our Lady and we ask her for help with this. Help us to 
pray with more confidence in your Son, to bring our prayers to God the Father in your Son's name, through your Son's name, which means imitating His basic attitude towards God, trust and love of His will. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.